Glasgow, this is ATV Reports Entertainment News Wrap with Sean Linden. Hello and welcome to ATV Reports News Wrap. Looking at some of the recent showbiz highlights from ATV Today. Coming up in this edition of Entertainment News Wrap for June 2017, Thomas and Friends, Tom Richards, Tom Daly, Joey Essex, Avatar, and UK TV is really saying something with their new idents. First up, film studio bosses recently released a preview trailer for the latest Thomas Tank Engine movie, which sees a new character voiced by Hugh Bonneville. Hugh told us, I am delighted to be involved in the latest Thomas and Friends movie. Like so many others, I enjoyed the books when I was young, so it's a real honour to be voicing a new character, Merlin. Join Thomas on the most thrilling ride of his life. I have to help James! Where friendship and teamwork... Oh! Each other can help save the day. When isn't he a clever little tank engine? <laughs> this is the most excitement I've had in forever! Olympian and ITV personality Tom Daly has teamed up with High Street retailer Argos to promote the virtues of spending more fun times with family and friends. The retailer has found in their research that people are spending less time with their nearest and dearest, so have joined forces with Daily to show, in a series of promotions, how easy it can be to entertain. Whoa. Tom, your challenge, if you wish to accept it, is to create a pop-up supper club from scratch for 20 guests in six hours. Good luck, and the clock starts now. Hello. Welcome to the empty space that we... I will. I know. As you can see, there's nothing here. So we've got a delivery on its way and you're going to have to actually help me put things together. Thank you so much, your lifesaver. That was okay. so fast. Got yes, a few so items good. for you today. Excellent. Kitchen stuff needs to go into the kitchen. Fan needs to be on ASAP because it's boiling in here. Make sure it's nice and tidy in there because we've not got long left to go now. So have a guess how long it took me and these guys to put it together today. This whole dinner party or everything in this room from scratch. A couple of days. A couple of days. It took us six hours. Wow. Six hours. There's some cherries in there as well. In other movie news, Disney has launched their Avatar experience. So now we stand here in this amazing new landscape to honour the best of both of our worlds. And to open Pandora to everyone who has ever dreamed about visiting. The attraction allows visitors to experience the world of Pandora, as Disney's CEO and Chairman Bob Iger explained at the opening ceremony. We've been looking forward to this moment for quite a long time, and we're thrilled we have a chance to share it with all of you. Walt Disney famously said that it's kind of fun to do the impossible, and it's a sentiment that captures the soul of our company, reflecting the optimistic spirit that really drives everything that we do. As we push the limits of creativity and innovation to bring the digital world of Pandora to the real world of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And now everyone, including me, who has ever dreamed of visiting this extraordinary world can explore its astonishing landscape and ecosystem see the Navi, soar on the back of a banshee, and become part of the Avatar adventure. Set in a 12-acre site, the attraction is entirely based on an original idea by movie executive James Cameron, first envisaged when he was 19. For me, it's kind of surreal, because it started as, uh, you know, dream images that I had when I was, you know, 19, 20 years old, things I would draw and paint, then uh, turn that into a story, story got turned into a movie. In the process of doing the, the movie, we had to create it all digitally, so every blade of grass, every leaf, every tree was all created digitally, but it never really physically existed. It looked real in the film, but now it's been made physically manifest. You can touch it, you can smell it, you can walk through it. I'm blown away. And I, you know, the thing is, I was trying to tell somebody this earlier today. I never got to see the movie the first time because I had seen every part of it 10,000 times before it was ever finished. So I never got to really see it 
the way the average viewer got to see it. When I walk through here, and when I go on the, the Flight of Passage ride, for me, it's like seeing it all for the first time. It's, uh, it's a really a wonderful experience. Now from the world of Pandora to the equally glamorous world of a Wilco store. For sure. Fans of The Only Way is Essex star, Joey Essex last month mingled with bargain hunters as the Into Lakeside Shopping Centre welcomed the latest Wilco store, okay. officially opened by the Towie personality. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Wilco Lakeside is officially now open. Looking ahead now to later this month, and ATV Today was honoured to chat with the Australian acting legend Tom Richards, who UK audiences will remember as David Palmer in the Grundy television serial Sons and Daughters. Here's a little preview of what's to come. Since you were a kid, you left school when you could have gone for a successful... I left school, if you remember, because this family needed money. Now, what happened? One job after the other, you either walked out or you were fired. Look, what do you want out of life, John? I think you'd understand. Damn right I don't understand, but I'll tell you what to do. Look, I got you that job with... Dad! Someone. You go back there and apologize. Dad, it's a lousy that job. job! Someone's driving a truck all over the country, but it's a job. You never hear me complain. No, I never hear you complain. All I ever hear you say is hello and goodbye. This is the longest talk we've had in years, you Look, know. Don't that. get smart with me, son. Sons and daughters, the story of sons and daughters is actually about two families, one living in Melbourne, one living in Sydney. But it basically came with my character, David Palmer, and Rowena Wallace's character um, having twins. We eloped, actually. But this established two families, one in Melbourne and one in Sydney. And this gave Grundy's a golden opportunity of actually making a show that would bring Melbourne and Sydney together because. In those days in the 80s, a show made in Melbourne wouldn't really rate too much in Sydney, and a show made in Sydney wouldn't rate that well in Melbourne. But having and working and filming in Melbourne and Sydney, Grunny's had a really special thing happening that actually made the show rate very well in both states as well as in Australia. They should come back and face the music. Music? Is that what you call it? David John could spend years in some stinking jail. How in the hell can I wish him a happy birthday with a murder rap hanging over his head? Sons and Daughters used to have some good um, cliffhangers, really. Uh, they made them made the viewer come back. Used to think, well, used to get us going too, wonder what's going to happen. And people used to ask, what's going to happen there? What's going to happen there? So the uh, Bevan Lee, the writer and the script editor, used to really bring some good cliffhangers to keep the show going. And they're interesting characters, I mean, you know. It was Pat McDonald, Fiona, um, Rowie, Pat the Rat. Her name was given to her by Peter Phelps, actually. Seemed to stick and stuck there for all the whole, whole series. You're a possessive bitch shacking up with a born bigamist. I'll give you two weeks if you're lucky. I think I'll put you on our Christmas mailing list. Oh, what a reckless waste of 30 cents. Oh, no, money well spent. No, it'll just be a little yearly reminder. A little card that sort of brings you down to earth. Because despite having an ego the size of Africa, the plain fact is, you lost. A range of Tom's television work has been released on DVD, and you can find out more about these releases over in our Soap World section of the ATV Today site. Ron Howard is to produce an official documentary movie on the life of the acclaimed tenor Luciano Pavarotti. The production comes from the team behind The Beatles' Eight Days a Week documentary and will look at one of the most popular classical artists in the history of the recording industry. Madame Two Swords in Blackpool recently unveiled their latest waxwork, joining a host of showbiz names ranging from Michael Jackson to Keith Lemon. Kim Marsh has joined a collection of Coronation Street characters at the attraction and can be seen behind the Bar of the Rovers return alongside the likes of Brett Gilroy, Vera and Jack Duckworth, Hilda Ogden and Ken Barlow. A book has been released charting the story of Australian serial number 96. Written by Nigel Giles, the publication looks at the groundbreaking programme which ran from 72 to 77. Set in an apartment block, which the show takes its title, 1,218 episodes were produced. 
It was deemed too explicit for UK viewers, with all our broadcasters turning down the chance to screen it due to scenes of sex, full frontal nudity, interracial relationships, gay and transgender characters, rape, and drug addicts. Well, we uh, we look after the place, you see. I mean, our house used to be here, and, and then we sold out, and they uh, built this block on the side. And we just stayed on. <laughs> oh, Herb, don't say that. You'll be having me young, so I think we had nowhere else to go. <laughs> oh, you know how it is when you've been in the one place all married life. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps you two don't. Oh, I can see what you mean. You, uh, you still regard this whole block as your own. Exactly. Mm. The story of number 96 can be purchased online in the UK from Melbourne Books. Put us all together. Plus many, many others. And we make? Number 96. Oh, and of course the most important people have been you, the television viewers. And from all of us here to all of you there, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your warmth and wondrous support. Good night. God bless. And goodbye. And that's just about it for this edition of Entertainment News Wrap. You can keep up to date with all the latest television showbiz and soap news at atvtoday.co.uk and on Twitter at atvtoday. We'll leave you with a showreel from UK TV of their new look, Really Channel branding, which they tell us they're really proud of. I've been Sean Aden. Thanks for watching.